Well, hey guys, just a little instructional video, I guess. I've had a few people ask me, how do I do more inputs than what my audio card can support? Do I need to go and buy a bigger audio card or can I buy two audio cards and link them together somehow? But I've got Ableton or I've got Logic or I've got whatever DAW you've got. And on a Mac, you kind of get stuck with the option of having to choose one device. So you can't really link them together this way. But if you look down the bottom there, you'll see this thing called an aggregate device. And that's what this video is about. How do we set one up? It's really easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so what we need to do first is we need to find a utility on the Mac under utility so you go into your applications folder scroll down to utilities and this is what we're looking for here audio MIDI setup let's launch that let's make it quite big we're going to need the, the screen space so let's make it big and what we're going to do first is click on this plus button down the bottom left hand corner and select create aggregate device now this is where we can link multiple audio devices together. In this case we're going to go with an MX1 which is the Roland MX1 and you can see that it's got the 18 inputs there. It's already picking all that up and that's just through the MIDI device itself, the US, sorry the USB device itself. Then we're going to have the Presonus Studio Live. It says Fire Studio there but it's the Studio Live desktop mixer and it's a 16 channel mixer. And then I've also got the Presonus Studio 192 which currently I've got one ADAT module plugged into it. Now you're also want to go ahead and select this drift correction column. Unless your devices, all of them, have this well clock feature built in, you're going to need to check this to make sure that they are all in sync. And the reason for that is it actually emulates the well clock feature. So that's it. Um, when you check these boxes, the order that you check them in is the order that they'll appear from left to right. You can rearrange them and you can also inspect all the different types of channels you've got. Alright, so let's go back to Ableton. And what we're going to need to do in Ableton is exit Ableton, completely close it down and open it up again. The reason why we need to do that is because it needs to reacquire the system devices and in here I don't have any that's fine that's a standard audio device error message we just go back command comma and we'll select our input device now and you'll see this aggregate device that we just created this behemoth 60 in and 66 out device and that's really our three independent devices all being aggregated together thanks to the back end of the Mac OS. We also have to configure the input. And it looks like it's remembered from when I was playing around with this before, but you're gonna have to remember what each of your devices has, whether they're stereo inputs or mono inputs, so you're going to need to make sure you know what devices have what inputs. Uh, I know that the MX1 has 18, the Studio Live Mixer has 16, and the Fire Studio has 26 at the moment. I'm going to actually put another 8 at module in, which will give it another 8. It'll give me a total of 32. That'll be amazing. Anyway, let's go back to Ableton Live, and the input configs uh, need to correspond exactly to what inputs you've got. So on an MX1, the first four inputs are mono. So we don't need that stereo one there. Um, you or you can actually put the one and two and three and four as stereo because you can actually uh, combine inputs on the MX1. So we'll leave that. But when there is actually no physical mono, this is where you actually have to select five, six stereo so the MX-1 only has stereo inputs for the rest. So they all need to be selected. So that's kind of not much help, but 
decent anyway. The last thing that we want to do is select the output config. In which case, we'll set it to, let's just set it to the MX1 7 and 18, which is the PC output, and that's fine. Now, let's get this working a little bit. So if we change that master output to 7 and 18, that's all good now. And let's see if we can get some sounds. Now, on my MX1, I've got the TR8 making a drum beat. So let's see if we can find that in nine and 10, there it is there. So there's our drum beat. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do a sub 37 and we'll plug that into the Studio Live mixer. So that should be, there we go, 21. Now we don't want the stereo input, we want the mono input for that one. And we want to change that to input and let's change the patch. And there we go, that's all working fine. That's pretty much it, really, to show you how to use it. Just be aware of latency. So if you're a real stickler for latency, that's probably where you're gonna to have to go and buy yourself the higher end multiple input device and have it singly. But this will get you out of trouble if you're just wanting that peace of mind and have all of those inputs permanently connected to your DAW and then you don't have to go and find them. Let me know if this is what you wanted in the comments below. Tell me if this is the sort of thing you want me to cover. Um, I'm learning just like you guys. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but when I do find stuff out, I'm really happy to share it with you. And if it helps, thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe because I've got plenty more videos coming. Cheers, mate. Bye.